Okay, we're at day 15 of the Colonial Town Trap Out. Colonial Town, downtown Orlando. And we're still getting bees out of the wall. They're still coming out. It's a really nice colony. In this entire time, I haven't been stung once. But you can see the trap out door I have here. There's two exits on, there's one on this side, one on this side, and the bee can come out, but she can't get back in. And so what we often have in a trap out situation are bees that leave in the morning to go foraging because as we know, it's always the older bees that leave the nest. And when they come back, uh, they find they can't get back in. You can often get a lot of irate bees hanging around the outside of the wall here. When I showed up a little while ago, there were a whole lot more of them up here. In a sense, they have moved up in here. They figured it out and they've moved up into the box. There's the entrance. You want to try and make the nook entrance or the box entrance in front of your trap out as close as possible to the trap out doorway. But anyhow, um, you want to provide some type of place for the bees to go because, like I just said, they're irritated. They have collected a lot of forage, some nectar, pollen. They want to put it in the cell and they can't do it this way. Now what you ideally want to do by providing a nook, you're providing a space for them to congregate, a place where they can be out of the elements during the time they're waiting, um, and hopefully, if possible, provide a frame of brood with a little bit of honey or nectar. Um, I wouldn't pull out a big old frame uh, from my box or something that's completely full of honey. You want something that's maybe out on the edge of your uh, your brood, your brood uh, frames, possibly something that just has a little bit. But um, Orlando here in Central Florida uh, was very warm. We had a whole lot of swarms uh, this past year, which is unusual for so late in the season. And um, I also found in my hive boxes a lot of swarm cells, and I was able to use some of those swarm cells in. Uh, demonstrations, putting them in a uh, observatory hive for people to look at, but when I got done with them, instead of putting them back into the hive box, that would create problems, I went ahead and put them up in here one at a time. And uh, that acted like a magnet. It helped it pull the bees up out of the wall up into the box because you're providing them with a furnished apartment. There's food, there's brood up there. It's very attractive to them. And so it, by putting that swarm cell, the queen cell, from my other hive box in here, it serves two purposes. I averted having a, a, a swarm in one of my out yards out of one of my hive boxes, and I don't want that this late in the season. But I'm also providing this colony with uh, a queen cell and a possibility of a new beginning. It's crazy doing this really at this late in the season. Um, again, I'm just doing it because I love this and also uh, this home is really near my neighborhood and so it's easy for me to come over here and check on it. Often trap outs aren't feasible because of the back and forth attention you have to give them to make sure that they're not getting back in the wall to make sure that you provide them things like I was just saying to make sure that you keep an eye on them if the trap out is in close proximity to a, a neighbor or a public area where there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of traffic. If you're going to do that then I would honestly suggest you use a, variety, um, a succession of boxes and move them out as each box gets full. That's what I do, just for safety's sake. And then I recombine them later uh, at a different out yard. And that's what I'm doing with uh, these bees. I'm taking them to an out yard in Apopka and recombining them there where I have to. But so far, I've uh, already created one full colony with, um, there were five queen cells created out of that frame of brood that I put up here in the nook. They took those uh, eggs and fed them and I got uh, five queen cells. So I moved that away with the full box of bees and we're starting all over again. And last night when I came here with the latest swarm cell that I found out of one of my hive boxes, 
um, the first thing when I showed up, they were all hanging out here. There were a big blob hanging down underneath and uh, they were resisting going back up into the box here. And so I put the, um, the queen cell and the frame up here and so I'm back here to check on the status and see how these girls are going and if they like the box. So I'm going to climb up here up on the ladder and we're going to take a look and see how it's going now. It looks like they really, really like it. Things are going really well. I think the queen cell was down in here somewhere. Let me see if I can uh, just check. I'm going to push a few bees aside. Please excuse my horrible filming. I'm trying to hold everything and hold the camera phone at the same time. Let's see. Where is that queen cell? Well, I'm just going to leave them alone. It's right underneath here. They are so tightly meshed together over the top of that. I think they're doing really well. Yep, and they're over on this side too. So everything is going great. We have a little bit of capped honey right here in the corner. A little bit over here. It looks like they're busy uh, discussing things and working it out. Got a little bit of honey right there in the corner. So everything is going A-OK -okay here. But you can tell they're really taking to it now, now that I've provided them with a little bit of comb and um, the next thing I'm going to do is probably the next time I come in another three or four days I'll bring a, a few more frames with uh, some old comb attached to them that'll give them a little bit more storage space and more congregation space and uh, Everything's going great. Normally it's hard to predict how long you're going to need to do the trap out process because um, if you think about the, uh, the life of the bee, it takes three weeks from the time an egg is laid till it, till it hatches. And then it take the entire life cycle of the bee is about six weeks long itself. So um, from the time the egg is laid to the time she comes out the entrance of her nest, you're talking about roughly six weeks. And I've only been trapping out here for now it's just the very beginning of the third week. So it's really hard to gauge how long to do it, when you're done. You just really have to pay attention to the flow coming out of the wall and um, what they're telling you. I, I believe that each situation is unique and um, you just have to modify to, uh, for them and for you and for the, um, the, the um, what's going on around outside too, the neighbors, the, the surroundings. So. Uh, pretty happy with this. I think they're going to be just fine and uh, I'll probably film again in about a week and hopefully I would really love it if I was um, I was done. I was, I'd really love it if they were done and they were ready to go to their new place.
The reason I filmed this, though, is because I want people to know that anybody can save their own bees. You don't have to call an exterminator. You can keep your own bees and uh, instead of having them in your wall, you can put them in your backyard. And uh, there's plenty of information online and on YouTube about um, trap outs and things like I've been talking about today. So please consider that before you call an exterminator.